What's up guys, Mike Builds, back with another quick little battery video, this is just a quickie. Um, I think I showed you guys that this portable generator, whatever body's all done. Somebody asked to see what the bus bars look like right here. So you can kind of see those. And then I got lazy at the end of these wires. But I did make new bus bars, I just gotta get the, drill, the holes drilled and installed. And then we gotta tidy up this little rat's nest. But anyways, the point of this video is a lot of people have been asking me about these blue china cells I got. I got these on AliExpress uh, for a little over $400. They're definitely used, probably some grade B nonsense, but we have a big Dally 250 amp EMS Bluetooth. Right now we're just charging it with the 10 amp charger, and I'm gonna charge these all the way up. I also have the app on my phone so we can check the cell uh, voltages. Anyways, I also have this Dally Active Balancer that I wanna try out, so it's like the high voltage cutoff, like when one of the cells gets to 3.65 or 3.75, the BMS is gonna shut off, but the rest of the cells are not gonna be at their full charge yet, so I think when that starts to happen, when we get close to it, or maybe even before, I guess when the cells begin begin to get unbalanced, I want to throw this on there. This is also Bluetooth, and then we're going to look at the phone and kind of check to see what the cells are doing, and I want to kind of try this thing out, you know, see if these active balancers are any good. So there it is right there. Kind of zoom in a little bit. And this is the Bluetooth version. I think this thing was cheap, too. I, I want to say it was like $30 or $40, so I'm definitely excited to kind of try that out. Because I've noticed if your cells are too out of balance, like maybe you have some used cells or maybe you're mismatching, which you shouldn't do, but mostly if you have used cells, um, if the voltages get too out of balance, these things have like a bleed style balancer, which means it just bleeds off the fullest um, cell, but it only does it at like a couple milliamps. So if the battery's massive, it's not really gonna be able to keep up and you're gonna have to cycle it a bunch of times in order to get it to balance. So we're just gonna give the active balance a try and kind of go from there. But anyways, we're gonna let this run for a little while. The battery's at like 80% right now, so I'm gonna let it get all the way up. We're gonna top active balance it. I almost said top balance. We're gonna active balance it and kind of see if we can get all the cells the same. And then I would like to do a big discharge test. Discharge test. So I need to find a way to hook up an amp clamp or a watt meter to this, and then we're gonna slowly discharge the battery all the way down to 2.5 volts per cell, and we're gonna see exactly how much capacity these Chinese 200 amp hour used cells actually give me enough as long as i get at least 150 i don't feel like i'll get super ripped off but if i get anything worse than that which is 75 percent of the rating capacity then i'm not gonna be very happy but anyways just a quick little update so we're gonna keep getting this going and as soon as i begin the active balance we're gonna go from there all right here's another active balance right here this is one of the haltech ones and this is the dally one and the biggest difference between this and what's on the bms's is these are active balancers so these will take actively take voltage from the highest cells put it to the lower cells versus a passive balancer like on most bms's all it does is have a simple bleed circuit with a little resistor to bleed power off the most charged cells so you can kind of see how these actually make more sense and for a while i thought this is how all the bms's did it but apparently not so hopefully maybe in the future we'll see these built into the big you know actual bms's because the bms will give you all the safety functions for the cells and this will just help you keep everything balanced. Now, a lot of people will say, if your cells are really nicely matched and they're new and they're nice, you don't really need to actively balance them, which is probably true for the most part, but people using a lot of recycled older cells, you know, because they're cheaper and they may not still be necessarily bad, they might hold, you know, 80, 90% of their original capacity, it's kind of a good idea to keep them balanced up using one of these devices. Hey guys, it's a few days later. We've had the active balancer on here now for a couple days. I let it kind of just do its thing. And as you can see from the BMS data, if it'll focus, this cell was the highest. Now the middle one's there, the second's the highest. And if you look at our cell, delta is only 0 0.018, so that's pretty good. So very happy with that. We've been just kind of letting this sit and connected. This isn't even turning on right now because I set this to activate at 0 0.025 voltage difference. And that's it, I'm gonna keep charging this. I wanna get this thing up to 100%, reset the state of charge on the BMS and that's it because I've never really given this thing a full charge and then I want to do a discharge cycle connect it to a, a shunt and we're going to hook it up to a load and see how many watt hours we get out of the battery so that's it I'm just going to keep charging it but so far very happy with the active balancer I wish this was built into this it would make it life a little easier um, maybe they will do that one day but as of right now you know if you got to use an external active balancer it does seem to work just fine and this is Bluetooth as well so you can configure it and keep an eye on it and all that so that seems pretty cool but anyways I'm gonna let this charge up some more and then we're gonna kind of go from there hey guys Mike builds so a quick update I'm still balancing this pack I cannot get these cells top balance because I didn't hook them up all in parallel when I first got them now I'm paying the price so don't be like me parallel your cells 
do it the right way. I'm just waiting for them to naturally balance with my active balancers and stuff. This battery's all done. We did a video on that. I have coming soon. But real quick, as this is charging, I wanted to show you guys the method I'm going to use to capacity test my batteries. Crazy 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, uh, inverter, 40 amp charge controller. This is my latest current meter I've been kind of messing around with and I really like this. Also, it has a phone app. So look at that, pretty cool. The only issue I'm having with this, right, and my idea, basically the, the premise of this idea is obviously it's a power station, portable power station, but also it has a big Anderson connector right here. And what I'm gonna do is connect any battery, this one or any of my other batteries over there or the one I'm charging right now. We're gonna connect it to this setup, put a load on this thing, and we're gonna discharge the battery until it hits low voltage protection. And the idea is this is gonna show us our accumulated watt hours. However, for some reason, the kilowatt hours is not moving at all. It is showing amp hours, but I know people prefer watt hours. We could do a conversion to see what's what, but I really wish this would show this. Maybe it has to just run a little bit longer. Um, right now we're just charging the big bank over there. So we're pulling 440, 430 watts, something like that. But that's gonna be our dummy load is just charging more batteries. So once that blue battery is completely full, we're gonna unplug this battery. We're gonna plug it into this, fully charge, and we're gonna completely discharge it. And we're gonna see exactly how much power we get out of it. And we're gonna run it till it completely dies. So at about 500 watt load, it should take about you know four to five hours, maybe less, maybe more, depending on how good the cells are. But anyways, I just don't know why it's not counting the accumulated consumption. It doesn't show it on the app either. Um, I've tried messing with the settings, so I'm not quite sure about that. But we're just gonna let it charge. I'm gonna do the discharge regardless and see if it, see if it shows me anything. Hopefully it does. But like I said, worst case, we'll have amp hours and we'll just do the math ourselves. But everyone prefers watt hours, I understand why. So we're gonna do our best what we got and kind of go from there. But that's the little update. So yeah, as soon as that blue battery's charged, we're gonna hook it up and our dummy load's gonna be the Sun Gold Power Inverter Charger. We're gonna be charging all the other batteries because I can assure you they're gonna take more power than what that pack has in it to get the state of charge up to where it's supposed to be. Because right now that's at about a 50% state of charge and that pack alone will not get it to 100. So that's it for now. Just wanted to kind of show you guys, I am working on our discharge testing rig. I haven't done any battery discharging yet on this channel because I haven't found a way to really do it. However, I'm kind of experimenting with this. That's why I have the connector. That's why none of this is hardwire. That way I can just plug in whatever battery I want there. And I have the inverter, I have the solar charge controller if I need to charge it, you know, all that good stuff. So anyways, that's it for now. We're gonna pick up from, we're gonna pick up as soon as I get that battery charged. All right guys, so we got our pack completely fully charged. I went ahead and recalibrated our current measuring device right here. So it's at 100%. I went ahead and set the capacity to 200 amp hours. I'm going to reset all these. This is going to be our cumulative amp hours counting up. So as we use power, this is going to count up until we get to the lowest we can get, the most we can get out of this pack when it goes into LVC uh, through the BMS. So once it hits that, whatever this number is, that's going to be our final amp hours. I wish it counted watt, kilowatt hours, but this is charging, not discharging. So that's just the way this works. But anyways, everything's set. Um, our load for the, for the discharge test is just going to be the other battery bank. So I'm gonna plug the charger into this and we're gonna use this whole power station using just this battery to charge this. And we're gonna pull all the power out of this and that's it. We're gonna see the exact amp hours we're getting out of the battery and kind of go from there. When it's on, it's gonna pull about 30 amps on the 12 volt side to power the charger. And that's about a 0.2C load. So that's it. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this all hooked up, plugged in, get the inverter turned on, and we're gonna run it until this thing goes into low voltage protection, which is when the BMS sees 2.5 volts on one cell. And then we're gonna see the amp hours and kind of see where we're at for capacity. All right, so the extension cord is going to our Sun Gold Power Inverter. And this inverter is charging uh, all the batteries on this cart. Normally people use a heater for their dummy loads, but I'm just gonna charge batteries because the state of charge of this is about 49% and there's no way that this pack by itself will fully charge that. These batteries are not hooked up. So it literally goes from this battery through the Anderson plug to the disconnect, through a fuse into the inverter and then we have our current shunt right there. All that little stuff is measuring. So as you can see, we're already, we've already reset the amp hour count, which is that one right there with a little lightning bolt and we're pulling about 36 amps. So we're gonna let this run until the battery dies and see what the results are. All right guys, so we're capacity testing our Ally Express Big Blue 200 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery. These cells were obviously used, so we're doing a small capacity test just to see how much capacity we actually get. 
it's very well known that a lot of these cells people buy are kind of crappy so I wanted to do my own little test on them so as you can see the voltage is starting to get kind of I would say a little lower than normal like normally it hovers at like over 12 and now we're starting to get close to 11 and we're pulling 17 amps so we've had a pretty constant load of between 200 to 500 watts just charging uh, this battery I've been using the small charger as well as the inverter built-in charger which pulls close to 40 amps on the DC side so between those two um, but the voltage drop started to get kind of low I mean, it was dropping below close probably below 11 with the bigger load on it so we put the smaller load charger which is that one and it only pulls about 200 watts as you can see so if you look there it says we've used 144 amp hours and we have 55 amp hours remaining but I came here to look at the as you can see by the smart BMS those are our cell voltages so we're starting to get close to 25 when 25 is about tapped out so I predict we're gonna get it says it has 27 percent which actually is, matches up perfectly with that but I don't know I predict we're gonna get at least maybe once at least 160 150 um, I think we're, we're at 144 used right now so if we get maybe 160 I think that's probably about all we're gonna get maybe a little more but to be honest, I don't know how much lower it's going to go, so I guess I'm just going to keep letting the test go. Um, I can't say I'm surprised, even if I only get 160 amp hours out of this, out of the rate of 200. I mean, it's not great. That's a pretty decent drop in capacity, but I learned my lesson. I'm not going to buy Chinese cells. I'm only going to, or I'm not going to buy cells that are not recommended or maybe taking a chance on AliExpress. Just don't do it. Just buy them for the suppliers that everyone trusts. There's a couple out there if you do the research. So I'm going to keep using these. Obviously, these aren't totally junk. I mean, still over, you know, close to 150, 160 amp hours. In my opinion, it's still usable, so not a big deal. But it does suck that I paid, you know, $400 for these. And they're kind of, yes, yeah, see, there you go. We're already below 11. So I think if I put a higher load on this, the voltage drop would just get so severe, it'd probably just hit low voltage protection. So like I said, I'm probably going to call it maybe around 150 amp hours. So that's about a 25% degradation from the rate of 200 so given you know we don't know how many charge cycles these have we don't know how old these are I mean 25% I guess sucks but you know it is what it is 75% usable capacity I'm not gonna complain about like I said though don't make the same mistake as me and if you are gonna buy these from Aliexpress just know you're probably gonna get junk used cells but like I said 150 amp hours still ain't nothing to slough at that's still a good amount of capacity and I'm still going to use it with the uh, rest of my system, no problem. So I guess that's it. I'm going to probably let this run down a little bit more. And then I'm going to do a recharge test, get these all the way back up to fully charged. And then put them in service somehow or put them in a solar generator or do a video of me charging them with the solar panel. I don't know, something like that. But anyways, I guess that's going to do it for now, guys. So thank you guys very much for watching.